Now, the first thing I wanna mention here is that these questions will be split. So these are all the questions we're gonna do, but I will split them up just to create a bit more space for us. Okay, so there's all the questions, let's begin. A block of mass eight kilograms is placed on a rough horizontal surface. The eight kilogram block, which is connected to a two kilogram block by means of a light string, passing over a frictionless pulley, starts sliding from A as shown below. First question, state Newton's second law of motion. So before I get the definition, let me explain. Newton's second law is all about using this formula over here. F net equals MA. Now let me quickly talk about Newton's first law. Okay, with Newton's first law, what he discovered was that if you have an object that is resting, or maybe it's moving, so maybe it's resting, or it is moving, but it's moving at a constant velocity. Then what Newton discovered was that the object will continue to stay like that unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced force. So let's say this block is just chilling there. Let's say there's a book on your table right now in front of you, or let's say you're watching this on a laptop. That laptop is just chilling on the table in front of you. That laptop will continue to stay like that forever and ever and ever and ever unless an unbalanced force begins acting on that laptop. That's pretty easy to understand. Another one, let's say um, you've got a car that is driving on the highway and it's driving at a constant speed of 120 kilometers per hour. That car will keep driving like that as long as the friction on the road is the same as the amount of force given by the petrol when the person is pressing the accelerator. If those two forces are balanced, that object, that car will continue to move at that exact same velocity forever and ever and ever unless something changes, unless the forces become uh, unbalanced, okay? So then let's go one step further. What Newton then said was, what will happen if the forces are not balanced? What will happen if um, the forces in this direction and the forces in this direction, what if they are not balanced? Well, that is where Newton's second law comes in. See, the second law came after the first law because he first looked at the first law, which says, what will happen if the forces are balanced? Then the second law says, what happens if the forces are not balanced? Well, as soon as the forces are not balanced, the object will do something called accelerate. That is what happens when the forces are unbalanced. The object will accelerate and the acceleration will be directly proportional to the unbalanced force or the F net and inversely proportional to the mass. Let me show you something. If you take this formula and you get the A by itself, then you're gonna have F net over mass. So can you see that because these two are both on the numerator or they're both at the top, they are directly proportional. And because these two are, the one is at the denominator and the one is at the numerator, they are indirectly proportional, inversely proportional, okay? So now if I go get the definition, it'll make a lot of sense. So it says when a resultant, a net force, you can think of that as an unbalanced force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the force at an acceleration that is, here we go, directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. This question says, draw a labeled free body diagram. Now, just a little note here. Um, in the time that I'm recording this, the department has just recently given a notice that they will no longer allow learners to make on free body diagrams. They don't want you to use components anymore. So, and I'm recording this in 2025. In 2025, I think they even started to introduce it in 2024, but I know that it's definitely in effect in 2025. Don't use components on free body diagrams. That includes inclines. You know, like sometimes on inclines, we would use FG parallel and FG perpendicular. Well, the department no longer wants that. Now they only want you to use FG. This I know is true for the CAPS curriculum. If you are in the IEB curriculum, you just need to double check. Um, that I'm not 100% sure, but I know that in the CAPS curriculum, which is the curriculum that most learners in South Africa are doing, 
um, it's we don't use we don't want to be using components anymore why they did that I don't know I don't agree with it I don't understand why they would do that anyways we have to obviously do what what they say so that we can get the best marks possible so now we're gonna go draw a free body diagram on block um, the eight kilogram block now for four marks it typically means there's gonna be four uh, forces so we know that there's gonna be gravity so I like to say FG but there are others you can use you can say W you must just check on the memos there's different things you're allowed to use then there's gonna be a normal force so I call that I'm just gonna call that N now we know that the system is gonna be moving to the right. This says here, yeah, um, they did say, da -da 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 -dum, starts moving from point A. So if you're moving from point A, then you must be going to the right. And so if you're going to the right, then there will be friction that will go in the opposite direction. And I'm just gonna call that F. And then here we've got this tension force in the rope. So I'm gonna do it like that. I'm not gonna break it up into components. Um, and I'm gonna put a T over there, for example. And I looked, um, I looked in the memo and some learners still used the components and they did actually award the marks. But then on the memo it says, accept, but please explain to learners that this is uh, being phased out. Okay, and then I think what I'm gonna do, so I just have, I don't wanna have only that one as a FG, I'm gonna label this as a W, like that. That wasn't wrong what I had, but I just feel more comfortable having all of them like that. Okay, instead of having only this one having FG, like force of gravity, um, and then these ones are all just single letters. I'm gonna rather just keep it all single letters so it just looks neat. Okay, there we go. So that just stands for W, which is weight. This question says, when the eight kilogram block reaches point B, the angle between the sistering and the horizontal is 15 and the acceleration of the system is 1.32. Give a reason why it's not in equilibrium. Well, equilibrium is only when you have Newton's first law when the object is either not moving or it is moving but at a constant velocity when you have constant velocity acceleration is zero but here we can see that there is an acceleration and so it can't be at equilibrium so we can just say um, acceleration is not zero this one says Use the 2 kg mass to calculate the tension in the string. Okay, so let's look at the 2 kg mass. Let's do a free body diagram. We know that it's got gravity, which I'm gonna put as W, and then it's got, there's no normal force. Normal force is only when an object is on resting, or not resting, or just on touching a surface, okay? So what else do we have? We've, we've got this rope, which is tension. So we're gonna put tension, okay? Now, don't make these equal. Those are only gonna be equal when the system is not accelerating. What you should use is F net equals to MA. I'm gonna choose down as positive because the system is moving to the right and down, okay? And so if I do that, I'm gonna have W as a positive minus T, which is negative, okay? And I'm gonna make that equal to MA. So W is its weight, which is two multiplied by 9.8. Tension, we don't know. The mass is two and the acceleration of the system is 1.32. Then you can just solve for tension. I'm gonna take it to the left hand, I mean to the right. And so you're gonna end up with two times 9.8 minus two times 1.32. And so tension will be 16.96 Newtons. I'm not gonna say up. It is up for this object, but it's not up for this object. Remember this tension in the rope is the same tension. So you don't really give a direction for that because it's different depending on the part of the rope you're talking about. So they should have actually just said, yeah, um, use the two kg mass to calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string. Even on the memo, they don't give a direction. So you just leave it like that, okay? And now this one, and I just wanna remind you there are more questions coming up. Remember, we've got two more questions on the next page. So it says here for four marks, calculate the kinetic friction force between the eight kilogram block and the horizontal surface. Okay, so what's important is that you understand that the tension in the rope here is 16.96. That means it's also 16.96 here. It's one piece of rope. The tension is the same everywhere in the rope, no matter what the angles are, no matter what, okay? So there we have that. So we have this value on our free body diagram. We know that that is 16.96. Right, 
So what we know is that we're going to use f net equals to ma again now for this 8 kilogram block. I'm going to choose right as positive because we know that the system is going to the right and down. And so that means you need to know all the forces in the horizontal direction. So that's going to be this one. And then it's also going to be the x component of this one, the x component. Now, we're not allowed to put it on the free body diagram, but when I'm explaining to you here, I can just remind you that, remember, there's going to be a tension in the x direction, and there's also going to be a tension in the y direction. Okay? And then remember that this angle is 15 degrees. So that means that the tension in the x direction minus the friction force is going to be equal to ma. You see how I just said the tension in the x direction, which is going in that direction, minus the friction must be equal to ma. So that means to get the tension in the x direction, it's going to be the tension, and then you're going to say cos of 15. How did I get that? So rem remember that this, there's like a triangle over here. And then I'm just using sin cos tan. But let me explain. Maybe some of you don't understand how I got that. That is fine. Let me explain. Okay. So we know this tension. We know this tension in this rope. We already calculated that. That is 16.96. We know this is 15 degrees. And it's a right angle. So if you want to find this one over here, then that is going to be the adjacent of this angle. And that is the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse is cos. So we can say cos 15 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And so when you get this by itself, you're going to end up taking the t up to the top, and you end up with t cos 15. And that's exactly what I have here, t cos 15. Okay, minus the friction, that is what we are trying to calculate, and the mass, actually we've got the tension. Remember that, 16.96 cos 15 minus the friction, the mass is 8, and the acceleration of the system is 1.32. So I'm going to take the friction over to the right-hand side, and so we're going to end up with 16.96 cos 15 minus 8 times 1.32. Ah, I've got a piece of, I've got like a little hair or something in my, on the, in the tip of my nose. So itchy. Okay, so uh, if we now had to work that out, we should get... 5.82 newtons. And once again, uh, should we give a direction? Let's see. Calculate the kinetic friction force. Yeah, here we can. We know that this is definitely going left. Okay. Just want to quickly add something here. I know a lot of learners, they get a bit confused at this last part. They're like, sir, but we said right is positive, and now the answer is positive. So why are we saying left? That's a good question. So it's because over here, we already know that the friction is acting to the left. So we already chose its direction. That's why we put it as a minus, okay? And so we chose it as, we already assumed that it's going to the left. That's why we put it as a minus. So then by getting a positive answer, it confirms that what we chose was the correct direction for the friction. And so that is why we just say 5.82 newtons left. This question says, as the 8 kilogram moves from B to C, the friction force between the block and the horizontal surface is not constant. Give a reason for the statement. Well, normally friction does stay constant, but what you would notice is that as this block begins to move, this angle over here between the rope and the, the horizontal, that angle is probably going to increase, right? You can imagine that that angle is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I'll show you a more of a exaggerated drawing. If we have a system like this, and you've got a pulley over here, can you see that this angle is very shallow? This angle is very shallow, right? But as it gets closer, as it gets closer, maybe when it's over here, now if you look at the angle, you can see it's got more of an angle, right? So as you get closer, that angle is going to begin to change. So this is only a one mark question. So we could just say that the angle between the rope and horizontal will increase. OK. 
Okay, this last one says the horizontal surface on which the eight kilogram block is moving is replaced by another surface made from a different material. Will the kinetic friction force above change? Will the kinetic, um, okay, so definitely yes, because we know that friction is equal to two things. It's equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. Now we know that this part over here is um, the, the way that we, or the, the thing that determines that is the surface, the materials of the surfaces. So maybe we'll be using, uh, for example, um, glass with a piece of wood or glass on a piece of rubber or a tire on concrete. Those materials, the different materials, give us a different coefficient value. Okay, so it says that the horizontal surface is replaced by another horizontal surface from a different material. Will the kinetic friction force calculated in question da -da 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 change? So we're going to say yes, give a reason. The coefficient of kinetic friction will change.